Hello my soccer universe to a long overdue update on the happenings in Portugal and in Spain. And while it seemed that in both leagues the title races are more or less uh, run and even at the other spots there's not too much happening, suddenly in Portugal we may have a title race. Benfica having had a super rotten uh, week plus losing or Clásico against Porto which could have been basically the nail in the title coffin, if you would like, then losing at home to Inter and then with another loss and another Porto win, having now only a four point cushion to their closest challengers, opening up the title race in Portugal suddenly, which came a little bit out of nowhere to be honest. Yes, Benfica have not always been great, but overall you would have expected there will be more or less cruising and I think many Benfica fans probably thought even about a potential Champions League final. Given that the draw uh, gave them all Italian teams, the Portuguese teams have done quite well as of late. No, nope. went all the other way in the worst possible uh, way. In Spain, as I said, uh, we <laughs> Real Madrid, Barcelona, there's not much to talk, talk about, although Real Madrid had a rather spectacular loss at home to Villarreal, who then, of course, managed to lose at home to Valladolid. But, by the way, Valladolid have probably two of the most entertaining games uh, this past weekend. Uh, but yeah, it is more that Barcelona cannot score at the moment. I mean, two nil-nil draws and none of them were in any way entertaining. And so I think the big fixture is because also Atletico Madrid have a very stable third place. It is now all down to the last top four spot, which is between the usual suspects, which are Real Sociedad, Villarreal, and of course Betis with the for format despite losing the Basque Derby, which I think is always a fixture that you should always watch purely for the atmosphere, not necessarily always for the soccer, although this time it was a rather good, good one, but the atmosphere there is always something special. That is actually a derby I would like to see firsthand, although I think I would be rather misplaced because it's all about being Basque. And it's a very, very local derby in a way because there are so many players that are from the region which makes it actually quite special. But yeah, that is also, that's not a big race. And then on the bottom, uh, the interesting uh, part there is that we have some really big names in there. Sevilla, probably are now out of it under Mendy Libar, uh, getting a controversial win at Valencia, but Valencia is in true trouble. As are Espanyol, a team that just not too long ago uh, played in the Segunda, came up again, and now again about to go down. It's also a team really, really in trouble. Uh, in, in a way, so those, those are three big names that are in the relegation battle that you would actually think those should be set on La Liga teams. But I actually want to start in the Portuguese Cup because we also had that, uh, <laughs> it's almost one and a half weeks ago now, the first leg. And, uh, it is so weird to how the semifinal are scared because we know the first finals before uh, the other semifinal has even played. Go figure. Braga beat Nacional away from 5-0. I guess we have Braga in the final. Uh, <laughs> just saying, the other one is between Fanfamilica and Porto. It is very much a Braga against Porto final. But let's go uh, back into the league. The, be the, uh, the big one was, even sooner than that, on the 7th of April, uh, Benfica and Porto playing each other. Um, on Friday, so the Benfica has enough time to prepare for their match against Inter. Uh, and the game started well for, for, for them. I mean, it's officially Diogo Costa, on, but the, uh, the uh, shot came from uh, Pedro Gonçalves, uh, gave Benfica a 10th minute lead. However, Porto then took over and had actually quite, it was an, a rather intense game, it was not a great game. But if there were chances, it was more on the Porto side. Uh, with Uribe getting just before they have an equalizer and then they thought even that they had a go, um, go ahead Colin was just a fraction offside by Galeno however Taremi gets that goal and he probably should have gotten a second one as well there was a pretty huge chance there couldn't convert it and Benfica had only semi chances very, very late, late, late on they, they produced something but that was a big one, and it reminds me, I think it was the last time Benfica won, the Porto also won there. Or, or there was something like, oh, it was maybe the other way around. It was clearly not the most important game for Benfica. They were all about the Champions League, and unfortunately that went pear-shaped for them. Uh, 
in the fight for the Champions League qualification spot, Braga got another big win, 4-1 over Sturil. Sporting kept themselves in there in a crazy game at Casa Pia, which is played in the National Stadium in Lisbon. And if you have not seen anything like that, uh, just Google it. It's a rather, rather uh, weird stadium with one side completely low and very wide, wide open. The other one in the hill, it's in, in the forest. It's one of the most scenic stadiums, I would say. This was a rather seeming uh, a scenic game as well with Trincao scoring a hat-trick for Sporting. But Casa Pia coming back three times. Not necessarily creating that many, many chances, but being super effective in front of goal. Trincao already in the first. Rafael Martins equalizes. Then Trincao, 39th go-ahead goal. Just before the half, Soma equalizes. Then Pedro Gonzalez. 48th minute, gives Sporting again the lead. Felipe, the 62nd, and there is Felipe is also two minutes later sent, sent off for a second yellow yellow card, and he had his big showing. 59th, first yellow card, 62nd is goal, 64th, he gets sent off with a yellow red, and then in 85th minute, uh, Trincao gets the win for Sporting. So, a rather entertaining game uh, there. But I think the even bigger results, and you know, whenever I uh, look at the games ahead, ahead Porto, yeah, this should be a win for Benfica. This should be a win for um, Porto, and then always putting a, ca a caveat, yeah, should, and that's exactly what happened here. Benfica clearly shaken by those two losses, having an absolute no show at Chavez, and Chavez in the 94th minute gets a winning goal through a bus. And opening the road for Porto to actually swoop in and close the gap even further. And that they did against Santa Clara uh, without being brilliant. But Uribe uh, scored a penalty. Otavio missed the penalty uh, later on. Then, uh, then in the match, uh, makes it 2 0. The goal from Santa Clara coming late on. The gap is closer. Uh, and the gap is widening for Sporting. Sporting will go back in the Europa League unless they win the Europa League. Then it could actually get automatically in the Champions League, which, uh, given their showing against Arsenal, also what they showed, showed against Juventus, I think it's not entirely uh, beyond them. Portuguese teams are much better this season than they're giving credit, 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 credit for. But they play home 1 1 against Aruka West Braga, win 1 0. And so, in the standings, I said it already, we had 99% Benfica, that got slashed out, it's now 81-18, with a smidgen of a chance for Braga, who are just two points behind Porto, as it's Sporting have a minuscule chance to make it into the Champions League. But it's those total for the rest, and goes more or less for uh, the Conference League spots. And yes, theoretically, the Europa League spot goes to the Cup winner, uh, but since it will most likely be a Porto Braga final, uh, it's the fourth place team that will go into the Europa League. Uh, I also want to point out that on the bottom, it's rather tidy this time around because you, you, you usually in Portugal it was that half of the league is still in a relegation battle. But we have Ipassos and Santa Clara, two teams that are going down. Maritimo in the um, um, uh, playoff spot, and Sturil is in there because from Portimonense upward. Seems that this is a very, very broad and even midfield, and there could there are always changes there, uh, which is also reflected in the uh, expected standings. The top four are more or less set again. Benfica let Porto in, but more or less set uh, in fifth spot. Aruka is rather so surprising there, and also the relegation spots are more or less set so it's kind of dense only in the middle where it doesn't really matter uh again i give you the next two rounds right here um it just casa pia braga because it was such a fun game against sporting vittori de Gimereche against sporting uh those could be uh intriguing ties and then we have the week after we have a um porto derby between porto and Boavista, which has been rather one-sided uh benfica go to gil vicente and sporting play against family cow so you know we hope that there will be some upsets there. Spain. Uh, I said Sevilla more or less did a, turn, uh, a turnaround, but they also are not quite yet settled as shown in their game against Celta Vigo, where, despite being a man down, they had a comfortable 2-0 lead through Siri and Acuna in the 81st. However, Rodriguez and Palencia equalized it in the 89th and in the 93rd and then Acuna is sent off on top of that so Sevilla finishing the game with a man uh, with not only one but two men less um, with also interesting uh, results that uh, Athletic Club 
uh, winning 2-1 at Espanyol, getting them uh, rolling and also Real Sociedad against Getafe. So the two Basque teams actually performing quite well at the moment and Espanyol being in trouble. However, the standard result from the previous weekend is Real Madrid 2 uh, Via Real 3 and Chukwueze being an absolute force of nature in that one. This was such a game that um, Via Real just willed themselves on Real Madrid. Again, Champions League more important. La Liga at the moment for Real Madrid, they have more or less a top four spot sewn up. They are not going to win the championship. So uh, you focus on the Champions League. Uh, it was a Pau Torres own goal that gave Real Madrid the lead with Chukwueze uh, equalizing just before the half. Vinny Jr. right after the half. Again, it's the lead and you think they're seeing it home, but then uh, Morales and again Chuchu Chuk in 70 80th turned the game around. It was an overall really entertaining game, but it was uh, eye o o opener how well uh, Villarreal were playing. Uh, I guess no one expected Vaya to lead against Mallorca being a barnstormer. It was even a great 3 3 draw, and that Vaya to lead took, took the lead. Then after the half, uh, within five, five minutes, Mallorca turn it completely around. But then Amala in the 68th and um, Monchu in the 86th turned around for Vyad Vyad lead. And then deep in stoppage time, uh, Murici gets the equalizer for Mallorca. So uh, rather entertaining stuff there. And as, we, as we've seen, the average score, or as we will see, the average scoring rate in Spain is not that high. So having a five goal and six goal game is uh, rather impressive. Cadiz get their first ever away win in Seville with a 2 0 at Real Betis. That's a result paired with the uh, win of Real Sociedad that actually more or less puts Real Sociedad in the driver's seat, whatever may come. Almeria win the local derby against Valencia, and Valencia look like really a little bit like a dead man walking. I think their coach will probably get sacked soon. Atletico's 2 1 win at Rayo was nothing pretty. Molina and Hermoso in 22nd and 24th getting get, get goals. Um, Rayo with a man less pull one back, however, cannot quite. Uh, complete the count. Kakabeg and Barcelona were also a bit lucky with a nil nil against Girona. Ter horrific performance, honestly. And yeah, uh, Barcelona, it seems so comfortable, but it's again uh, Carlos Carl, 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 like Negreira that takes all the head headlines with now uh, Barcelona press president um, claiming there's nothing there. It's a criminal case. We have to see where this will go, but this was actually on the past week. Um, this was actually happening on Monday. So yesterday from shooting this video. Uh, VRL after this great performance <laughs> against, I said it already, against Real Madrid losing at home to, uh, to Valladolid. Valladolid, you see them all up there having a really, really good, good week. The, after being beaten by Real Madrid 6-0, they played the 3-3 against Mallorca and the Mallorca team that also is hitting a little bit the stride and then having uh, this 2-1 um, away win at Villarreal. Not bad, not, 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 not bad. As I said, the Basque Derby uh, was very atmosphere. It's really, I more and more realize, and it was said, yeah, you get the better. I always make an effort to watch that, that one because the atmosphere is so, uh, so, so great, but it's a true derby as a derby used to be with many local players there. And what actually, and this I was made, made aware of what even tops it off more is, that there is hardly any crowd violence. Yes, it's fierce while the game is going on, but overall, uh, both uh, fan bases are more or less celebrating being Basque above anything else, which definitely makes it stand out. The standout performance was Iñaki Williams, who for once does not miss ch ch chances, but scores two uh, and give Athletic Bilbao the win and bragging rights. And given how the results fell last week, Real Sociedad probably is just about all right. I mean, they have now win-lose, 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 but all their opponents have similar streaks. Yes, Villarreal uh, was coming, but now with, with, with the loss again, it seems Real Sociedad might actually sort this uh, fourth spot, which is a mega result. However, they will not get bragging rights because those are with Athletic Club. As I said, Betis beaten Espanyol 3-1. Um, to close the gap a little bit, but it's still a three-point gap uh, that, that we have in Real Madrid. And so they're the winner in this top four battle overall uh, this, this weekend. And Real Madrid, actually a pretty nice performance with the goals coming, coming late. 
from Nacho and Asensio uh, winning 2-0 at Cardiff. This was a little bit coming out of nowhere. Uh, Girona, also a relatively entertaining team to watch 2-0 over Elche Barcelona again. And I, I regret it that I put that game on. Let me put that. I got a lot of stuff done. This was horrible. And... You know, every time I watch Barca, I am not convinced by them. Not in the slightest. Again, a dreary nil-nil at Getafe. Uh, at Atletico, Griezmann is proving again that he's probably the best player in the league at the, at the moment, scoring both goals in the win, uh, 5th and 43rd, and uh, Jimenez own goal in between. And then a rather controversial 2-0 win of Sevilla against Valencia. I think Valencia played quite well overall um, and Sevilla was very effective in the two goals by uh, Bade and then Suso uh, to get this 2-0 win. However, Valencia is very aggrieved by the referee. They, the goal, the first one, I think there was a clear foul before that. They should have been chalked off. Then they should have gotten a penalty. The ball is at their hand if you look at it. This has been given many, many times, and I hear not even they have shown it on the video screen. Everyone expected, including me, that this will penalty. The referee waves it off. I did not understand it. The second call that was was a little bit clear that this shouldn't be a, pen, a penalty. And then uh, Suso again with the second shot on goal scores makes it two to nil, and then Moriba is sent off. Also a little bit harshly, but you know, I can see why. But I think it was a harsh sense sending off. And it's 2-0 for Sevilla Valencia, who I actually think had more of the game uh, in serious relegation trouble. Such a huge team in such diet that's reasons all down to really horrific ownership. Ownership that I think everyone would like to see the back of it. And then yesterday evening, Mallorca, as I said, then goal goes around getting a 1 0 win at Celta Vigo. So if we look now at the standings up top, yeah, the gap got smaller, but not really. Uh, it's still a rather commanding 11 point gap, and Barcelona is going to win the championship despite Real Madrid being even rated higher. Atletico Madrid have also their Champions League um, spot more or less sewn up. So it's Real Sociedad, Betis and Villarreal with Real Sociedad uh, being in the driver's seat there. Maybe Athletic Club can make it into Europe, which would give a little bit of a change uh, there. However, again, um, one of the Europa League spots is going for the, uh, the cup winner. I should also sooner win that cup and maybe I should have done that. Then that spot would go to also sooner. And if they go to Real Madrid, then 5, 6 and 7 will qualify from the league so have that in mind on the bottom this is way more interesting there um yeah starting Sevilla now safe i would uh say they have a good cushion with that win so i think they can concentrate on the europa league maybe get a couple of more more wins and the whole uh CCC situation is settled however it's valencia and espanol that are really looking to maybe almeria could go in there but you know um, almeria already beat valencia Real Valladolid is also, uh, while seemingly kind of, sort of, safe-ish, you know, you always think that they could go on a bad run as well. Cadiz and Gaddafi also not quite out of it yet either. Uh, expect standings Valencia and Espanyol going down. That's pretty, pretty uh, horrific, to be honest. Uh, I give it the next three rounds this time. So here, uh, he, uh, let's talk next round. Just, just like we have the big one, Barcelona against Atletico Madrid. We also have Sevilla against Villarreal, which should be actually an interesting one. If we look now for the Champions League uh, race, Betis has also soon a not an easy one. Real Sociedad Rayo also not that easy. And as I said, Villarreal have have have, have to play against Sevilla. So uh, there there could be some swings happening. Uh, Valencia have to go to Elche. That's more or less a must win against the last place team. Uh, Espanyol uh, have to play against Cardiff. Also pretty big relegation three-pointer right there. Almeria against Athletic Club. So uh, I think if you look for it, there are some interesting games. Usually I would say watch Real Madrid against Celta Vigo, but no. <laughs> and then we have midweek rounds, and I give them both of you a next next round. We have Betis against Real Sociedad. That's the big one uh, there on that um, 
on that midweek. Unfortunately, it's a late kickoff, so I won't be able to watch another relegation three point between Valencia and Valladolid. And then Athletic Club Bilbao against Sevilla, kind of a traditional duel. And then on that weekend, um, we also get, you know, Barcelona Betis um, has always been a, a game that has produced goals, although the, the Barcelona going, I'm not sure. Also, soon Real Sociedad, a uh, total sleeper fixture right there. I don't know yet when I will do the next review video. That's why I thought let's cover the whole next two weeks. Any case, that was it from me. Please add anything uh, that you want to uh, state as well in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.